Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn Blender Soft Body Simulation Settings. Soft Body Simulation allows you to create objects that behave like soft, flexible materials, deforming and reacting to forces like gravity and collisions. It's used for simulating things like jelly, rubber, or other squishy objects. Let's see how it works. Press Shift A to add a cube object. Go to the Physics Properties tab and click on Soft Body. The cube now has soft body physics. Hit the space bar to play the simulation. Right now, it's just bouncing in the 3D viewport. It's because the goal option is enabled now. We will talk about the goal in more detail later. Turn off the goal for now. Play the animation again. Now, the cube will fall straight down. Let's go ahead and add a plane. Scale the plane up. This will be the ground for the cube object to hit. Select the cube, press G and Z, and bring it up a little bit. To enable interaction between the cube and the plane, we need to add a collision modifier to the plane. Select the plane and click on Collision. Play the simulation. As you can see, the cube is bouncing right now. All right. Select the cube and hit the tab key to switch to edit mode. The cube currently has only eight vertices. We need more vertices for the soft body simulation to work properly. Hit the A key to select all vertices and right click subdivide the cube seven times from the left bottom panel. Switch back to object mode and play the simulation. Now you can see the cube deforming and collapsing like that because we have much more geometry to work with. If you open the Edges panel and increase the bending value to 2, you'll see that the cube maintains its structure without collapsing in on itself. We'll discuss the Edges settings in more detail later. For now, we just did a quick overview of how it works. To have a smoother mesh, go to the Modifier tab and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Set the viewport level to 2 and right-click to shade smooth. If you have more geometry to work with, the simulation will slow down. Alright, let's go ahead and review the soft body simulation settings. In Blender, soft body simulations can collide with objects in the scene. The Collision Collection option lets you choose which objects or groups the soft body should collide with. This helps make the simulation faster by only checking for collisions with selected objects. Select the collision plane and move it slightly down. Press Shift-D to duplicate the plane, then move the new one up a little bit. Press M key, create a new collection, and move it to the new collection. If you go to the Outliner Editor, you'll now see that we have two collections. Select the cube and go to the Simulation Settings. Select the first collection and play the simulation again. You'll see that the cube passes through the top plane and collides with the bottom plane. Because it's in the first collection, if you select the second collection, the cube will collide with the top plane. Alright, let's delete the collection limits and open up the object panel. The friction controls how much the soft body resists the surrounding environment. Higher friction values cause the soft body to stick more and slide less, effectively dampening its movement. Set the friction value to 10. Select the plane and rotate it on the Y-axis. Play the simulation. Set back the friction value to 0.5. The mass value is the weight of the object. This is the mass of the vertices. 
set the mass value to 2 and play the simulation. You'll notice it collapses in on itself because it weighs too much. To fix this, you can increase the bending value. Set back the bending value to 2 and the mass value to 1. You can also paint weights and use a specified vertex group for mass values. Go to the Object Data Properties tab and click the plus button to add a vertex group. Rename the group as Weights. Switch to Weight Paint Mode. Paint the side face of the cube red. It means the side face vertices will be 1 kilogram and the blue parts will be zero weights. Switch back to Object Mode. Go to the Soft Body Settings and select the vertex group we just created. When you play the simulation, you'll notice that the cube falls over because that side weighs significantly more. Open up the simulation panel. You can control the internal timing of the soft body system with the speed value. The higher you set the speed, the faster the simulation will operate. All right, let's take a look at the goal option. Open up the goal panel and turn on the goal. When you play the simulation, you'll see it's just bouncing in the 3D viewport. The goal option lets you control which parts of the object stay more rigid and which parts can move and deform freely. You can do this with a vertex group. Go to the Object Properties tab and add a new vertex group. Rename the group as Pins. Switch to the Weight Paint mode. Paint the center of the top face with one weight. Switch back to Object Mode and select the Pins Vertex group we just created. When you play the simulation, you'll notice the vertices we painted are almost pinned in place. It's because the strength value is not too high. Open up the Settings and Strengths panels. You can see the default is 0.7. That means it's only doing 70% pinning. Let's set the default value to 1 and play the simulation. As you can see, it's now fully pinned, with the vertices staying in the exact same position. When you use a vertex group, you can use the minimum and maximum to fine-tune the weight values. The lowest vertex weight will become minimum, and the highest value becomes maximum. The stiffness value controls how stiff and springy the vertices are. A low value creates very weak springs, and a high value creates a strong spring. The damping value controls the overall speed of the simulation. Higher values reduce the spring effect, causing the movement to stop more quickly. All right, let's take a look at the Edges option. This allows the edges in a mesh object to act like springs. The pull value controls how much the edges can stretch. It represents the spring stiffness for edges. A low value means very weak springs, making the material highly elastic. A high value means very strong springs, making the material highly stiffer.
Let's disable the goal option and allow the cube to fall. The push value controls how much the soft body resists being compressed, like a spring. Low values are suitable for fabrics, while high values are used for inflated objects and stiff materials. The spring's vertex group allows you to have different push and pull values in the same mesh. Go to the Object Data tab and add a new vertex group. Rename the group as Springs. Switch to the Weight Paint mode. Select the Gradient tool and paint the cube from red to yellow. Switch back to Object mode. Go to the Physics Properties tab and select the vertex group we just created. Play the simulation. As you can see, the top face will be more elastic. The damp value controls the friction of edge springs. High values dampen the push-pull effect and calm down the mesh. The plasticity value allows you to deform the object after a collision permanently. A higher value causes more permanent deformation. The bending value controls how much bending occurs in the simulation. Higher values result in a stiffer material. The length value determines how much the spring edges can shrink or expand. This value is expressed as a percentage. 0% disables this function, while 100% means no change, allowing the body to maintain its full size. Setting the length value to 85 means the spring edges will shrink by 15%. Setting the length value to 120 means the spring edges will expand by 20%. Collision settings for edges and faces determine how the soft body interacts with other objects in the scene. Scroll up and click the monitor icon to disable the soft body for now. Add a cylinder object. Add a collision for the cylinder. Add a plane. Bring the plane above the cylinder and scale up. Add a soft body. Turn off the goal option. When you play the simulation, you'll see the plane doesn't collide with the cylinder. Enable the face option and play the simulation again. As you can see, the object collides with the cylinder this time because it considers the faces. When you enable the Edge option, you'll notice it doesn't collide with the cylinder. Now, let's scale the cylinder up, excluding the Z-axis. You'll see that it interacts with the cylinder now because it takes the edges into account. Delete the plane and cylinder. Enable the soft body for the cube. Alright, let's talk about aerodynamics. 
Aerodynamics refers to the effects of air resistance, or drag on soft body objects as they move through the air. The factor value controls how much aerodynamic force to use. The higher you set the factor, the denser the air will be, which results in a slower fall for the object. The stiffness adds diagonal springs to quad faces. This prevents quad faces from completely collapsing during collisions. Set the bending value to 1. You'll see the cube collapse in on itself. Enable the stiffness option and play the simulation again. As you can see, it prevents quad faces from completely collapsing during collisions. The shear value is the stiffness of the virtual springs created for quad faces. Turn off the stiffness. Self-collision prevents the object from intersecting and colliding itself during the simulation. Enable the goal option and set the pull value to 0.1. When you play the simulation, you'll see the object colliding with itself. Enable the self-collision and play the simulation again. That's it. Field weights allow you to control how various external force fields like gravity, wind, and magnetism influence the soft body. Add a wind force and rotate the force field so it points toward the soft body object. Set the wind strength value to 2. Let's play the simulation. So the wind force will affect the soft body. Select the soft body and go to the field weights panel. When you lower the wind value, the wind force will have less effect. You can also limit the force fields to affect specific collections. Press Shift D to duplicate the soft body. Hit the M key to move to a new collection. Select the collection we just created. Play the simulation again. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.